So today I'm going to be doing a review of the new Vario Empire Chronograph. It is a pretty cool watch. In all transparency, I wasn't this watch to review by Vario themselves. Uh, they didn't have any input in what I say in the video. Or they didn't have any input in uh, seeing it before it was published or anything like that. They basically said, hey, here's the watch. We want you to review it. Let us know what you think. So yeah, let's take a closer look. So we have a diameter of 38, look to lug of 45.4, height of 11.2, and a lug width of 20 millimeters. Some other general specifications for this watch, we're gonna have the Seiko VK64 Mecha Quartz movement beating away in here. Uh, of course, it's not on display, but we do get this really cool Empire State Building case back. We do have a sapphire crystal on the front here with an inner AR coating, 50 meters of state of water resistance with a regular push-pull crown. Uh, the watch is available in multiple different colorways, but each colorway is limited to 50 pieces each. And lastly, the watch retails for $298 directly from Vario. So starting off with the dial of this watch, and as with most of the watches in the Vario Empire line, I think it is very incredibly well done for the price point. Looking a little bit closer, we can see we do have a lot of, I guess you can kind of call it changes in finishing. We do have a middle guilloche kind of dial. We have this two more matted chronograph subdials right here. We have an outer brushed ring. And then all the way on the edge, I believe it's just like a plain matte black kind of seconds track. On the brushed outer ring, we have the really nice Arabic numerals written out in this very art deco font. The watch itself has a very nice cohesive design. You have just basically black and white elements on the watch. Of course, the outer ring is silver, but it still ties in very well with that white-ish type theme. And as I move the watch around here, you can kind of see that silver brushed ring has a little bit of life to it. It has an almost sunburst style nature. So at the end of the day, even though this is a sub $300 watch full retail, it does present itself a lot more expensive than that just because the quality of the dial itself is fantastic. Very, very minimal text on the dial, which I do like. It just says Vario at the top here. Uh, and usually I'm not a big fan of just 12 o'clock, uh, I guess you could say brand names with nothing at the six o'clock, but here I think it works fairly well, especially since because this is a chronograph hand, you kind of always have the seconds hand here and the counterbalance kind of acts as something visually at the six o'clock. So it doesn't bother me too much. And then looking at all the hands on the watch, obviously we just have polished stainless steel. It may have been nice to see them coated in white just for legibility purposes, but I still think it looks nice. It pairs well and whenever they catch the light, it shines nicely. So it's executed well as is, but I think there may have been a couple other ways they could have done it to make it a little bit more practical or just even pop that much more. And then really quickly before we move on to macro footage, we have a 60 minute running counter for the chronograph a 24 hour scale and no running seconds on the watch. So if you really wanted to have a seconds hand, you can have the chronograph always running. But at the end of the day, I don't think that's a deal breaker. And you don't get the quote unquote annoying tick of a quartz movement if some, that's something that really bothers you. So zooming in here on the dial and it is pretty amazingly finished and has a lot of depth for the price point. As you can see, the middle stamped guilloche pattern has a lot of depth to it. it is the biggest and almost squarish at the very edge and kind of moves into a more uh, pyramidal type triangular shape towards the very middle and gets very small. So it's a really fun texture and it plays with the light nicely. Looking at the watch from this angle, you can see there is a lot of depth to the dial. The guilloche center portion of the dial is the lowest down. Then you have the brushed uh, hour marker track. Then you have the chronograph subdials and this outer seconds track kind of on the same plane. So you get about three different layers to this dial and it adds a lot of depth and dimensionality to the overall design. And it's really nice to see. It's I don't really think I've seen many micro brands use that much depth in the dial. Every once in a while you'll see someone who has maybe 3D loom or something like that, but actual three-dimensional layer dial elements is a little bit rarer. Looking at the hour track in general, you can see it's brushed very finely. There are a couple QC issues, like I think you can maybe see that little like pock mark between the 11 and 12. But again, this is a $300 watch and it's something that it's really hard to see unless you go down to this magnification. Uh, but the Art Deco numerals themselves look really awesome. They are very three dimensional. They have a lot of depth to them. The outer seconds track similarly, although it's a little bit smaller, you can definitely see the puffiness quote unquote of the numbers. The way the chronograph register cuts into the hour track here is really nice. It blends really well, it flows nicely. And because the register cuts so much more into the dial itself, it is one of those things where it feels like they are separate layers, even though they're technically on the same plane. Then looking at the subregister more closely, you can see it does have a radial pattern to it, uh, which is nice, because again, you do have a radial sunburst brushing here on the hour track, and then you have a similar kind of patterning here 
in the uh, chronograph subdial, even though it is a different color. Uh, so it's a really nice mix of textures and patterns and really just levels here on this dial. Looking at the two here, we can see there either is a little bit of a debris or kind of maybe a scratch mark right near that. Although I haven't noticed it before, obviously at this magnification, some of the smaller errors come to light easier. Looking at the hands themselves, you can see they are pretty roughly finished. The counter hand there is pretty rough. The hour hand itself has a lot of marks and uh, kind of nicks and debris on it. Same goes for the hour hand, which is probably the more scratched of the two. Thankfully, the uh, chronograph running seconds looks pretty, pretty clean overall. Overall, most of the dial elements are done very cleanly and there's a lot of attention to detail and just a lot of detail to look at in general. But the silver and, I mean, well, stainless steel elements are a little bit more roughly finished. Again, I don't really notice this from wrist, but the QC isn't fantastic on these. I think if they would have gone ahead and coated them in like a white material to not only increase legibility, but that would also probably hide some of these little blemishes that you can see. So moving on to the case of this watch, and although it's fairly simple, it is still, I think, fairly well done. Uh, we do have mainly polished finishes, at least from the top view here. We do have brushing that is uh, vertical along the sides, and then again, a polished case back with this. Uh, I don't really know how this is done. I guess it's printed on there, uh, case back. So looking at the case a little bit closer, we can see we do have this very concave bezel to it, which I think is a very interesting touch. It's not a thing I think is usually used very often and it does lead nicely down from the dial into the rest of the case itself. There's a lot of kind of circular continuity there. The edge of the case here, as you can see, kind of has a similar roundness and flowiness to it. Uh, so it's almost like a stepped bezel in a way, even though the bezel, I mean, even though the case here isn't really part of the bezel, but it gives that effect. The lugs themselves, even though they don't necessarily look welded on, definitely look like they are a different piece that's maybe just put onto the case in some way. They stand out a lot architecturally from the case, and not in a bad way, they just give you a little bit more of a visual interest point there. Looking at the side profile of the case itself, it is obviously not the thinnest. It is a very unsubtle block of a case. There isn't really any finishing or beveling or angling to make it look any thinner than it is. But at the end of the day, it doesn't wear too badly at all. You do have a nice turn down to the lugs here, and overall the case back isn't too thick necessarily, so it does wear closely to the wrist itself. And I do really like that they went for uh, drill lug holes here. It makes strap changing really easy, and I think it doesn't hurt the watch design in any way either. And then looking at the case back really quickly, of course it's not see-through or anything, it's very rare to have a see-through Mecca Quartz movement, but we do get this nice kind of printed uh, logo of the Empire State Building, just to signify the art deco nature of the watch and the fact that this is called the Empire as well. And then one funny thing to note, as you can see on the case back, it says automatic, even though this is very much a quartz watch. It was a misprinting error. I believe this is more of a pre-production model, so uh, they are currently fixing that issue and putting them back up for sale. And then just really quickly to note on the strap, this is one of the strap variations you can choose to have with it. This is a quote unquote Italian leathered watch strap. It is from Vario itself. It does have quick release spring bars and it's fantastic quality. I think it not only pairs with the watch perfectly, but it is very comfortable, very buttery smooth, straight outside of the box. And I feel like the retail on these straps are about $40, give or take. And for that price, these are really fantastic quality. I've always loved Vario's leather products and this strap is no different. So moving on to how the watch wears, because this had a little fun guilloche pattern, I earlier was wearing my Sartori Ballard here. And there we have the Vario on my six and a half inch wrist. And as you can see, it's very well proportioned. It doesn't look too big by any means. It is a sub 40 millimeter chronograph. And because it's a chronograph, there isn't a lot of like free extra space on the dial. So it doesn't look necessarily visually larger than the dimensions would suggest. See, although it is a thicker case, it doesn't rise up terribly from the wrist, so it still does conform nicely, it wears comfortably. Um, I think the step bezeling helps it kind of visually narrow itself down a little bit. So it does wear pretty comfortably. The crown itself or anything like that doesn't really dig, and yeah, I dig it. One thing to note is when you activate the chronograph, the pushes are like a little bit mushy in a way. I don't know if that's just a fact of it being a quartz chronograph. I know they can have those kind of issues, but as long as you press down fully, they will actuate, but it's obviously not a great mechanical feeling to it. It is just a kind of byproduct of the price of this watch.
And then something I did forget to mention in the kind of the case area is the fact that we have this onion style crown. It is nice because it's very, very small. It's very close to the case. It's easy to grip, even though this isn't really a manual wind watch or anything, but I think it goes with the design very well. And again, because it's not a huge crown, it doesn't really dig into my wrist at all, even though I wear my watches up higher. And then moving the watch down a little bit, I have closer to a six inch wrist here. As you can see, the watch is still very proportional, still wears well, still doesn't even overhang my wrist. So you can wear this watch on fairly small wrists. And overall, I do just really like how the case wears on this guy. Looking at the watch from a side view, of course, it doesn't look like the thinnest watch, but again, it conforms really well. The case shape and then the lugs help turn the watch down to the wrist. It doesn't dig or hurt in any way as you flex your wrist. So again, although it's not the slimmest thing in any way, it still does wear very comfortably. Moving on to some other straps, and this is another Vario strap. This is a, I think they call it like distressed Italian leather or something like that. Either way, I think the tones pair fairly well, even though the dial on the Vario itself is a little bit dressy, a little bit more quote unquote upscale with that black and white theme. I think the brown helps dress it down and the distressing as well. And there we have it, a little bit more casual, a little bit more fun. And I think you can tell at angles like this, how I was saying the hands can be hard to read sometimes just because they are that polished stainless steel. Maybe if they were brushed, they'd be more legible. But again, I'm thinking the best course of action would have been to kind of just paint them white or do some similar process to just make them more colorful and more legible. Can't for the life of me remember where I got this from. I think it's from maybe this place called Strap Bandits or something. Either way, I'll have it linked down below and then you can follow the link there if you like the strap. I think it pairs well. Again, it, it's maybe not as casual in some ways as the brown strap was, but it definitely is more casual than the black grained leather. Uh, it has a little bit of fun, a little bit more patterning to the watch itself, and I think it pairs pretty well. And there we have it on wrist. It pops in almost like a subtle way, which is pretty cool. It maybe isn't a combo for everybody, but I think it looks pretty fun. And lastly, we have the Archer silicone strap. Of course, this brush track being more silver than white leaning makes the strap maybe not the most perfect pairing, but I still think it goes well and again, makes it more comfortable, makes it a little bit more summery, makes it a little bit more fun. I think on wrist, it doesn't pair or look as at odds as it does off wrist. So yeah, I think this is a pretty fun combo you can put the watch on. And arguably, if you even think you might like this combo, I think you should try it out. Because again, it is very comfortable, helps the watch plant itself very nicely in case you have any trouble with leather doing that. And yeah. So pros and cons of this watch, I wanna say that one of the biggest pros for me is it's just a really good dial design. There's a lot of depth, there's a lot of dimensionality to it. There's definitely multiple layers. So it's nice to see all those design elements coming together. It's not just a plain flat dial and you have a variety of textures, a variety of finishes, so it really comes together and looks pretty high quality. And thankfully, none of the dial elements are done to a cheap looking standard. Like it all does look very nice. Another pro for the watch would just be the case dimensions, basically. It is a sub 40 millimeter chronograph. It wears well, it fits pretty ergonomically on the wrist. And it's nice to see just a smaller chronograph. Overall, it's not something I would say is a super popular category in modern day watches. So it's nice to see the range expand, especially at this more affordable price point. And lastly, I mean, this may be just for me, but I feel like there's a lot of versatility in this watch design. Uh, it is very dressy, I think, by nature from that Art Deco styling, but it can easily be worn casually as well. So you do have that versatility of, if you need to wear it with a dress shirt, you can, it still would fit under a dress cuff. And if you need to just wear it with jeans, it's okay. And I think even the black strap that it was supplied on can fit both of those functions because it's not alligator to where it feels super dressy, but it's also not uh, a distressed, very kind of suede -ish or very uh, destroyed looking leather. So it can even be versatile on its just original strap pairing. And considering the fact there aren't a lot of dress type watches made in the micro brand space, it's nice to see this option that can fit both of those lifestyles or both of those needs in a collection. One of the main cons for me with this watch is the fact that the hands can be hard to read at times. They are very silver and they're not multifaceted. So at some angles, they pretty much disappear into the dial itself. So if you don't have the best eyesight or you kind of have a hard time discerning the, the very similar colors on the dial, this probably won't be the perfect watch for you unless you just like the design. Again, I think if Vario had done a like white coated hand or maybe you know, like a blue steeled hand or a blue colored hand, uh, the contrast would have been a little bit better. But as it stands, it's only okay. Another very slight con is the fact that the pushers can feel a little bit mushy. It's not a very necessarily reassuring click to the chronograph action, uh, but again, it's, it's a more affordable quartz chronograph, so it's not necessarily gonna feel the most premium out of anything, 
but I would say for the other quartz chronographs that I can remember how they actuated, this does feel a little bit mushier than I'm used to. Uh, but honestly, I've like pretty much never used a chronograph in my life, so it is what it is. So yeah, honestly, this watch surprised me a lot. I like it a lot more than I thought I would. Uh, and it, I think, offers arguably a good amount of value. It's a little bit under $300. You get a cool Mecha Quartz chronograph, and honestly, quartz chronographs are a little bit more useful and practical than mechanical ones. I know that's kind of sacrilege, but that's just how I feel. And at the end of the day, it's a kind of a styling too we don't see very often. Art Deco is a little rarer. Art Deco done well is even more rare. So at the end of the day, if you like this design, I think you should definitely check it out because you probably will be surprised just like I was. Anyway, those are just my opinions. Thank you for watching as always. Hope you got something out of the video and I'll see you in another one.